Hi, today I want to show you how I recommend importing in payroll information from a payroll preparation company. Now, what I'm going to show you is that I like to have it imported into the general ledger and into bank reconciliation so that you can look at the detail in the general ledger. You can also use the bank reconciliation module to reconcile your bank account. And furthermore, you're kind of getting another checks and balance by doing it that way because what we're going to do is take advantage of using a payroll wash account and by using that wash account we'll make sure that everything is imported in because we'll be importing in two different methods and it'll come to the net pay or the net amount coming out of the bank account in two different fashions and it'll help us balance to make sure everything's in. So we're going to do this tiny little pay run here. So we have a payroll date of 4-12-2017. We have gross wages. We have um, employee withholding. So gross wages of $5 minus employee withholding of $2 would mean the net pay run is $3. We have employer taxes of $1 and a payroll preparation fee of $0.50. Cents. Now I know in the real world this can be anywhere from 10 line items to um, a thousand line items depending upon the complexity of your payroll system, the number of employees, and the number of your chart of accounts. Now what I would suggest on the recommend, uh, the importing side is, first of all, on a general ledger side, uh, you can have any information you want, but there are three things that are required. One of them is some kind of static field. I'd recommend that to be a date and it needs to be the same in exactly every row for that column and we're going to utilize this to create a header file. I'll show you more about that in just a moment. You do need the general ledger account number of where you want your transactions coded and you also need the debit and credit information. Now this can be in one column where you have a positive for debits and a negative for credits or you can have two separate columns like we have here. Now there is other information you can also track. Uh, anything that you typically see in a general ledger transaction entry under journal entry, you can add in such as a reference line, a distribution reference line, currency, things like that. But this is the minimum requirement for a general ledger entry. And it could be in any order because with the integration manager you map which col each column represents. Now I also have in bank reconciliation uh, we're going to import in a file that shows all of the transactions exactly as they will occur from the bank account. And so you can see there's going to be three different entries. One is um, one is the net pay, if it, I'm assuming in this case it's either one check or it's the net amount for uh, maybe a direct deposit. If you have individual paychecks, you'll need to have those listed as well. I would recommend using something generic like the word paycheck. We have the payroll taxes, that'll be the withholding amount and the employer taxes. Typically a payroll processing company will bring them out as one lump sum and then um, they will often just go ahead and uh, take from your account their preparation fees. You can see there are three different line items coming out of the bank account and if we look we can see they total six dollars and fifty cents. Let's go back to the general ledger entry. Now this is laid out a little bit differently. You can see everything that is coming out of the bank account which is gross pay and employers taxes and then you could also see we have this little entry here of um, fifty cents. Oh actually that should be six dollars and fifty cents, shouldn't it? There you go, so we'll set that up. Let's open up the integration manager. We've set up two separate integrations for this. One is a general ledger integration. Now we took that one CSV file, we saved that other information as a generic CSV file. Let's go in here and open it up, you could see. We called it prglimport.csv. Uh, and we've set it up where we're only looking at the first column, which is the date column. And the reason why we did this for the header is we want to group it by, in other words, create one line for every journal entry. And we want the entire uh, spreadsheet information, all of the lines to go in one journal entry. So we're just kind of grouping it. And what that does is if we do a preview, you'll see that there's just one line item. Now this one, we've actually used the same file, but this time we've said show us all of the columns. Now when we go in and preview this, you can see there are four line items. All right. Okay. 
So let's close that out and let's look at the bank rec one. Here we did not need a header information and if we go in and look you can see it occurs exactly as it is. Now in this particular scenario I have hard coded every line item to come out as a decrease adjustment in bank reconciliation. So everything will come out as a decrease adjustment. Now one of the things we've done to avoid having to do two separate imports is we have created an integration group and this way you can pull it up and I listed out what it does. You can see it contains both of those integrations and now I'll just simply have to click run one time. Now the first thing it's going to ask me, since I did not put a reference in my Excel file, it gives me the opportunity to create a reference for me. So I'm going to call this Belinda's Oop, I guess I accidentally clicked enter, sorry. <laughs> and it imported that. And now the um, bank transactions are going to prompt me for a date. Now I have set these up separately because you might want the bank transactions to come out the date the check was actually written and the general ledger to post according to the date that payroll ended. If you do not use the same date for both transactions, bear in mind that at the end of a period you could have a balance left in your wash account. The net year to date will be zero but there may be some balance in there and that's okay. You can con consider that uh, somewhat of an accrued payroll. That's why I like to put it right next to my cash account on my financial statement and then that way I can combine the two together to show my cash balance of my payroll account. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK there and close that out and let's go into back into general ledger. I'll click on general and let's look at our journal entries that uh, were created. They're not yet posted in this particular scenario. Um, this is already posted. This is a bank transaction for the payroll fees. It's posted in bank rec. It's waiting to be posted in general ledger. The payroll taxes posted in bank rec waiting to be posted in general ledger. The paycheck posted in bank rec waiting to be posted in general ledger. You'll notice I did not use employee names. I kept it very generic for privacy reasons and the general ledger entry. You can see where I did not finish typing in everything. I uh, got trigger finger and clicked on enter too fast. But you can see my reference and all the line items accordingly. So let's go through and post all of these transactions. I'll just cancel my reports. And oh, we have an error go through and see what that error was. Oh, I'm out of balance, 50 cents. Oh, it, right, I did not change my source file. That should be $6.50 right there. Alright, you can see how easy that is to fix. Close that out. Let's go back and check our wash account. If this balance is zero, and it is, then we can safely assume that everything posted correctly and we're good to go. If for any reason it's not zero, then we know something didn't get posted correctly. So that's a great checks and balance. And besides that, we can now use our bank reconciliation module to reconcile our payroll account. Let's pull this up. And you can see where I've actually done this import twice. And you can see all the transactions accordingly. So now when we reconcile our bank account, these numbers will match up exactly to the bank statement. Hope this helps.